What's up, everybody? This is Alfonso from No Life. We're here today with Blank TV, dangerous music for dangerous people. We're hanging out with Sleepwave today. How you guys doing, man? Awesome, man. Good, man. Good. You guys doing good? Awesome. So, uh, is this the first year you guys are playing Dirt Fest? Absolutely. <laughs> it's first year, huh? Yeah, yeah. Our record isn't even out yet. So. Oh, so you don't even have the record out yet. Yeah. When's that come out? September 16th. September 16th. Yeah. Awesome, man. So what do you guys think so far being out here, man? I woke up like 10 minutes. Yeah, realistically, <laughs> yeah, we just woke up. But, uh, I mean, it seems cool otherwise what I've seen so far, you know? Yeah, this is this is actually Michigan's, like, it's a local festival that was started about 10 or 15 years ago, and it's, like, the biggest one that we have. So cool. it's actually really cool that you guys would come out here, man, and stop by over here and play for us, man. That's oh, yeah. really awesome. I mean, we're really, happy really to be cool. here, man. We're for sure, man. So, uh... It's every band's dream, you know, to be like a label artist to get a record deal. You know, what's the story, what's the story behind you guys? Like, how did you guys end up to where you are right now with a deal? Um, uh, he, uh, did what most people probably do, trying to make demos himself as a free agent and get to a point where you're really stoked on your songs and how it sounds and make a presentable product. And then we, uh, we just shopped around. Like, we went and met with every label you could imagine. Every or, Did you guys just, like, personally just show up and we're like, hey, dude? Well, we had, we had, uh... Oh, obviously you have representation. Yeah, we had some, yeah I mean, just being from under oath, it definitely helped. Of course. People were interested to in hear what I was up to do. But, it, yeah, my recommendation to anyone else is just make a, make a product that you're happy with before you show it to people. Don't, don't rely on someone else to give you the money to make a, a good enough sound quality, a good enough song, whatever it is you're trying to do. Like, until you get to a point where you're, even if our demos would have come out, we would have been fine with it. Cool. So. I definitely agree with that, man. I mean, I'm in a yeah. local band myself. We're playing here tonight about 6.30, and it's, you know, we've been a band for X amount of years, and it's the same thing, man. you got to just go out and get it, and either, yeah. either way, you got to be happy about it. So it's cool to kind of hear you guys kind of give that kind of advice to younger bands that are up and coming, man. So, uh, you got to trust yourself in that way, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I agree, man. It's like you have to believe in your product. If you don't believe in your product and what you're doing, you're, you know, nobody else is going to, you know, no matter what. So, so you know, we're looking at the industry today. It's obviously vastly changed, I'm sure, from when you were in Under Oath. And it's actually cool, you know, talking about Under Oath. I don't want to focus on that too much, but I actually met Under Oath, like, years and years and years ago. You weren't even in the band. Like, they came to some music stores. So it's cool to be here and, like, see and hear right. about all that stuff to how it transitioned. So that's really cool. So, I mean, obviously the music industry has changed so much. And the time that, you know, from when Under Oath was to right now, you know, looking at social sites and the internet and stuff like that, do you think it's had a positive effect on music or do you think it's had a negative effect? I think it's a double-edged sword. I think it's easier to be, uh, to put yourself out there. It's easier to get people to, to look at it because you have a little following or whatever, but I feel like there's been so much, um, it's like overpopulation. You know, For so sure. Oh, yeah. And they all... You know, it's like, you know, there's, there's so much traffic that people now are just so ADD that like, or like one song from them and one song from them. No one's really listening to the album anymore. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's up and down. Like, we're not very, you know, social media savvy, so that hurts us in the, in the short term. But I think in the long term, it's different songs from one to more. Yeah, man. Really of course. But yeah, I guess you notice from the beginning and having followers in the beginning and little girl talking t-shirts, which is very important. <laughs> yeah, there you go, for sure, man, for sure. So here in the States, we're seeing a lot more, like, more kind of festival setups rather than, like, tours. We're seeing more, like, festivals come out that are tours, like you see in Europe and Australia, you know. It, while kind of headlining tours are kind of diminishing here and they're not becoming as prominent, you know. So, you know, how do you think it affects the market these days for bands? Do you see that kind of as a positive or do you see that kind of as, like, oh, it doesn't really matter? I don't know. I, I haven't really seen a lot of that, but uh, I guess the positive side of that is more, more people are showing up to shows, but if you're trying to make a living, playing music, that means probably less money for every band of all. It's just a ten band bill, you know, it's like, for sure. it's hard. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to make enough gas money to get to the city, you know, <laughs> let alone make enough money to pay a rent. job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rent, that rent. Rent. Cell phone bill, whatever. For sure. So, it does, I mean, festivals do put less focus on the band and more on the scene around the band. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and again, that's good and bad. You know what I mean? Like, if you're, if you're in it for the sort of cultural aspects of it, you know what I mean? Like, 
your in your genre or style of music because of that and less about the art, but more about the sort of camaraderie and the you know what I mean, the, the banding together of a whole group of people. And that's awesome. If you're in it for sort of the art and the art alone in that way, then I can see that I can see that being a not a problem, but you know, your personal end suffering for that. But I think that as long as kids are coming out to see this, whether it's on a best bill or it's a headlining bill or whatever it is, you know what I mean? As long as the kids are still showing up and they're still getting what they want to get out of it, then live music, you know, existing at all is always going to be a positive thing. You know what I mean? I agree, man. I mean, at the end of the day, man, you're making music and you're making music for people, and I think that's that's what's most important, no matter what. So I got the last question. I don't want to take too much of your guys' time, man. I know you guys got a lot to do. So uh, if you could choose three legendary artists to watch today that may not be alive or are are just not playing music anymore, aren't touring anymore, who would they be for you guys? Nirvana would be number one. Yeah, Lane Staley would be number two. Yeah, Lane Staley would be number two. Yeah. Yeah, Jimmy, I would say Hendrix. Man. I, I would have to agree with every one of those, that's, man. That's prime, though. That's true. That's true. I was born a Led Zeppelin fan. Jimmy Hendrix fan. Yeah, so. Like, old school, like, early black. For sure. And I mean, like, Led Zeppelin now, it's, I mean, I know that they've done a few shows here and there. Right, they kind of right. got back. Yeah, but it's but not John Bonham, no, you know. It's like, no, John Bonham was just, all. there was just something about, you know, every I'm once saying, in a while, there's somebody that has that thing, you know. Like Keith Moon, too, man. Oh, it's dude, like, yeah, you know. It's, it's like, it's like a force of nature, you know. Of man? course, man. And it's Unreal. like, you, those artists, you only see those artists every decade, you know, when you get these yeah. people that really have that thing that you can't just explain, but they just change the entire face of, you know, so many people's lives and, and how they feel about yeah. music. I mean, I know Nirvana changed my life forever, you know, yeah. so yeah. it's cool to hear that, man. Here, for what it's worth. Of course. And you kind of look a little like Lane Staley, just to let you know. Yeah, man. I'll take it. That's all right. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, guys, for giving me your time, dude. I really appreciate it. I know you guys are really busy. Thank you, you know, dude. thank you for doing this. Again, we're here with Blank TV. You're watching Sleepwave today, and this is Blank TV, Dangerous Music for Dangerous People. Can you guys check it out again? What is it, Blank TV? We are Sleepwave. You're watching Blank TV. Dangerous music for dangerous people. All right, guys. See ya. Thanks, guys.